On his deathbed in 1227, the great conqueror of Asia and the Middle East, Genghis Khan, divided his kingdom into Khanates among his four sons. The eldest son, Batu, inherited the westernmost part of the empire, covering Russia and Kazakhstan. The term Golden Horde refers to the Mongol rulers who dominated these lands for the two and a half centuries following the death of Genghis Khan. The boundaries of the territory inherited by Batu included the Upper Volga, the territory of the former Volga-Volga state, Siberia to the Urals, the Northern Caucasus, Bulgaria, the Crimea, and Khwarezm in Central Asia. Batu spent several years consolidating the massive territory that he now had possession over. Then, in 1235, he set out to expand the empire. His secret weapon in his push to the west was the brilliant and accomplished general Subutai, who had served as his father's primary military strategist. Subutai swept into the Urals with his Mongol army, overpowering the Bashkir ethnic community and then moving into Volga, Bulgaria. Over the next three years, Batu greatly increased his Kanate by conquering the principalities of Kiev and Rus in modern-day northern Ukraine and western Russia. Batu next headed his feared Mongol army west to invade Poland and Hungary. Five separate armies swept into Eastern Europe. Two of them attacked through Poland, with a southern army moving through Transylvania. The main army was led by Batu himself, with Subutai by his side. It attacked Hungary, while the fifth army, led by Batu's brother Shiban, invaded to the north of the main army in a wide-sweeping arc. On April 9th, 1241, the Mongol army, led by Baidar, the son of Batu Khan's brother, met a combined force of Poles and Moravians under the command of Duke Henry II the Pious of Silesia. The defending army was supported by feudal knights who had been sent by Pope Gregory XIV to stop the forward march of the Mongols. Through a series of feigned retreats and vicious counterattacks, the Mongols won a spectacular victory. Duke Henry was left dead on the field of battle, along with thousands of his men. The Mongols cut the right ear off the enemy dead and ended with nine bulging sackfuls. Two days later, on April 11th, Batu led his army against the forces of the Kingdom of Hungary at the Battle of Mohai. A Mongolian vanguard had attempted to cross the Sajo River and surround the Hungarian army the night before, but had been discovered and slaughtered to the last man. Early the next morning, the main Mongolian army attacked. After sustaining heavy losses, they managed to push the Hungarians back upon their camp. They then used siege equipment to hammer away at the camp's fortifications. Tents were also set on fire. The panicked Hungarians tried to flee, but the vast majority were cut down in mid-flight. It was another stunning victory for the Mongols. Some historians believe that Batu's army had the advantage of gunpowder in this battle, which would have been the first time it was used in a European battle. A victorious Batu now set his sights on Vienna. Before he set his army in motion, however, he received the news that his older brother, Ojedai, who had succeeded his father as the Kagan Emperor, died. Rather than returning to Mongolia, he remained in the vicinity of the Volga River. His brother, Guyuk, became the next emperor, and the change at the top brought an end to the Mongolian expansion to the west. Batu established his capital at Sarai, east of the Aktuba River, which was a tributary of the lower Volga River. Batu and Guyak were not friendly toward each other, with Batu refusing to attend the grand ceremony that marked the succession. His own power as ruler of the Golden Horde was cemented with nearly all of the Rus' princes in his territory, including Yaroslav II of Vladimir, Daniel of Galicia, and Sviastolav of Vladimir, doing obeisance to him. When Guyuk demanded that Batu make the pilgrimage back to Mongolia to pay homage to him, Batu sent two of these princes, one of whom was poisoned to death in Mongolia. In 1248, Guyuk again demanded that Batu come to Mongolia to do obeisance to him. This time, Batu complied, but brought a sizable portion of his army with him. Guyuk advanced with his own army to meet him, but died in transit. Batu now threw his support behind Monga Khan, who became the next great Khan. A great purge of the real and perceived enemies of Monka 
now took place. The main beneficiary during this time was Batu, becoming the second most important person in the empire, second only to Monka himself. The only one of the Rus princes who now opposed Batu was Grand Prince Andrei II of Vladimir. The Mongols overran Vladimir, forcing Andrei to flee to Sweden. Batu put his son Alexander, who was a Christian, in as the Grand Prince of Vladimir, making him the supreme Russian ruler. Batu died in 1256 and was succeeded as Khan of the Golden Horde by his son Sartag. Upon his return from Mongolia, to be received by Monga Khan, however, Sartag died. He was succeeded by the infant Ulagchi, who was either the son or brother of Sartag. Within a year, he too was dead. His successor was Berka, the younger brother of Batu, who ruled from 1258 to 1266. In 1259, he recommenced the eastern invasion with attacks in Lithuania and Poland. After a succession of ferocious victories, he demanded the submission of both the Hungarian monarch and the French king. The king of Hungary was forced to bow down before the Mongols, but Louis XIV refused to do so. Batu then moved on to assault Prussia, inflicting heavy losses on the Teutonic Order of Knights. In 1259, Monka Khan died, leading to a Mongolian civil war of succession between Kublai Khan and Arik Boka, both grandsons of Genghis Khan. Berka gave his allegiance to Arik Boka. However, when Monga Khan defeated his adversary and took the throne, he threw his support behind the new great Khan. Millions of Europeans in Eastern Europe now lived under Mongolian rule. The Pax Mongolica, or Mongolian peace, allowed them to live their lives without interruption, provided that they paid their taxes to the Mongolian overlords. In fact, life was less violent than it had been under medieval European rule. A justice system was introduced, and trade routes were made more navigable and much safer. The Silk Road was reopened between China and Europe, massively increasing cross-cultural exchange between Asia and Europe. Such technologies as papermaking, printing, and the manufacture of gunpowder made their way to the West during this period. By the early 1300s, the Silk Road had also paved the way for the Italian silk industry. The Mongols allowed the citizens who lived under the Golden Horde to choose their own religion, provided that their way of worship did not interfere with the laws of the land. The Mongol rulership also served the purpose of unifying the previously disparate Russian states. The peace of the Golden Horde continued until 1340, when the Black Plague swept in from the southeast. So many people were killed that basic food production and tax revenue was severely impacted. By 1359, the various Mongol rulers were fighting amongst themselves for supremacy. At the same time, a number of Slavic and Tatar city-states began to rise up in revolt. The Mongols managed to suppress these uprisings, but they could not hold back the power of Tamerlan, the supremely powerful ruler of the Shagatai Khanate. Tamerlan's army devastated the Golden Horde in 1395, looting its cities and killing many thousands of people. The Golden Horde survived for another eight decades under a succession of Mongol rulers. Then, in 1480, Ivan III Vasilevich, the Grand Prince of Moscow, expelled the Mongols from Moscow. Ivan then established the Russian Empire, becoming Ivan the Great. In 1487, a Mongolian attack on Lithuania was soundly defeated. The same thing happened four years later when the much-diminished Mongols attacked Poland. Finally, in 1502, the Golden Horde capital of Sarai was overrun by the Crimean Khanate. After two and a half centuries, the Mongolian Horde was no more. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe. If you have any other suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover, please leave a comment below. And we'll see you next time on History Junkie.